from dancing on the red carpet to appearances that caused a sensation. And yes, even a bit of royal moments. The 77th BAFTA Awards united celebrities from around the globe. It was the biggest night in the British cinema industry, and we've gathered all the juicy details just for you. Welcome to the EE e. BAFTA Film Awards 2024. <laughs> yeah. But why did this ceremony raise so many questions? After six years at the Royal Albert Hall, the British Academy Film Awards have relocated to a new venue, the Royal Festival Hall at the South Bank Centre in London. There were so many stars on the red carpet that you couldn't count them. Even BAFTA's longtime president, Prince William, surprised everyone by attending the ceremony after all. Despite his wife Kate Middleton's recovery from surgery and his father, King Charles, battling cancer, William was in high spirits, chatting with fans, actors and friends, like David Beckham. This time William was seated next to another Kate, last year's winner Kate Blanchett. We hope no one gets jealous. And did you know that some people jokingly called BAFTA's red carpet Barbenheimer? Because the casts of the two biggest films of the year were all there. Margot Robbie has been popping up at events quite often, and it's all been Barbie-themed outfits, mostly in pink. This latest appearance was no exception, although the pink was paired with shiny black, and this particular look stood out as one of the most fashionable. Though Margot didn't snag the award for lead actress, she was all smiles talking and snapping photos with her pals Emily Blunt and the winner Emma Stone. It doesn't seem like there's even a smidge of competition among them, does it? Speaking of Stone, who has already won numerous awards for her role in Poor Things, this time she thanked her dialect coach, and here's why. He did not laugh at me when he taught me how to say water even though, as an American, I say it like, water. Emma's La La Land co-star Ryan Gosling was one of her biggest cheerleaders when she walked to the stage. In fact, Ryan was totally chillaxed this evening, not even bothering about his chewing gum on the carpet. And hey, why not? It's all about the Kennedy. Oh, and by the way, we'll talk more about Barbie in a bit. Meanwhile, Killian Murphy, leading actor of the year, remained as humble as ever. In his acceptance speech, he made a rare yet adorable mention of his wife and kids. And finally, uh, to Yvonne, Malachi and Aaron, you're my best friends and I love you so much. Thank you guys. But Robert Downey Jr., well, let's just say he was a whole different story. Acting as if he already had the award in the bag, he started busting out some dance moves on the red carpet. It looked like even Robert's wife was taken by surprise. In the end, Downey Jr. became the best supporting actor, and true to tradition, he stole the spotlight on stage. Robert delivered a hilarious mini-biography about himself from a scrap of paper, leaving everyone in stitches. And to cap it off, he gave a heartfelt thanks to his wife. It was extra sweet considering how private Robert usually is about his personal life. I place this at the feet of my Alpha and Omega, Susan Downey. Thanks. Hugh Grant had everyone roaring with laughter when he announced one of the nominations in a brilliantly original manner. The actor came up with a satirical poem about the movie Biz, channeling his inner Oompa Loompa from Wonka. Oompa Loompa. <laughs> Dumpa dee dee. Now the best director category. <laughs> People are even suggesting he should host next year. And what do you think? But let's give credit to David Tennant. He rocked it. The actor started the ceremony with a video featuring his former colleague Michael Sheen. According to the script, he supposedly promised to babysit Sheen's new puppy, Bark Ruffalo, named after Mark Ruffalo. I don't want any of your excuses, David. You promised. 
And how did it end? Well, the presenter showed up in the audience with that dog. What are you doing here? I'm hosting the show. What? This is why you wanted me to dog sit, so you could sit there? Yeah. In fact, before the award show, the host mentioned he'd been keeping an eye on the recent Golden Globes. He saw how some Joe Coy's jokes, like one aimed at Taylor Swift, didn't go over well. Tennant didn't want any slip-ups like that at the BAFTAs. And he can definitely say he succeeded in that mission. Divine Joy Randolph's victory speech is one for the history books. It kicked off with the actress showering her colleague Chiwetel Ejiofor with compliments. You are so handsome. I was really hoping you were going to be here and oof. The best supporting actress was super nervous. She clutched her papers tight and read her whole speech from them, tears flowing freely down her face. And she gave a special nod to her legendary co-star. Paul Giamatti. Oh gosh, I cry every time I say your name. <laughs> You represent everything that is true and good about this craft. Thank you so much. Thank you. Another heartwarming moment was when Ted Lasso star Hannah Waddingham sang Time After Time. As she performed, movie industry players who have passed away appeared on screen, making it a truly touching tribute. Another musical performance came from Sophie Ellis Baxter. After the release of the movie Saltburn, her song Murder on the Dance Floor has seen a resurgence 22 years later. It's even become a hit on TikTok, with 2.5 million videos made to it. I just think it's a real celebration, actually. So there's sort of no heads in agenda for me. I just want to get out there and have a brilliant time with loads of dancers and try and, you know, make everybody buff a little bit in their seats. Interestingly, at the end of the performance, Barry Keoghan blew an air kiss to Sophie. It was caught on camera and became one of the sweetest moments of the BAFTAs. As the night wrapped up, the whole crowd stood and cheered, all because Michael J. Fox took the stage. There's a reason why they say movies are magic, because movie, movie can change your day, it can change your outlook, it can sometimes even change your life. Despite his battle with Parkinson's disease, the actor announced the year's top winner for the best film. It was Oppenheimer, just as everyone expected. Christopher Nolan's film scored big with seven prizes, marking a major triumph. The gothic fantasy Poor Things took home five awards, while the drama Zone of Interest walked away with three. And that's where some of the fan dissatisfaction crept in. This year's BAFTA nominations shocked with some big snubs. Lily Gladstone wasn't nominated for Best Actress in Killers of the Flower Moon, and Martin Scorsese missed out on a Best Director nod. Bradley Cooper's film The Maestro also didn't get much attention, leaving fans disappointed. Despite this, Bradley Cooper didn't seem upset about it, or he just kept a cool exterior. Greta Gerwig was another notable absence in the director's category. In general, it wasn't a great night for Barbie. Despite being last year's highest grossing movie, it didn't receive any love at the BAFTAs. With five nominations, it ended up empty-handed. Meanwhile, the ceremony wrapped up with the iconic phrase, come on Barbie, let's go party. And indeed, the stars continued the celebration, some for their victories, and others simply to share in the joy of their colleagues. Do you agree with the BAFTA's results? Let us know in the comments and stay tuned as we bring you all the highlights.